I've got to do some work on my forklift today. It's leaking oil, you know, which is no surprise, but now it's leaking a little bit more than normal. I'll give you the quick skinny on this machine. It's a Clark C340, and I believe that means it's a 4,000 pound machine. It's rated to lift 3,800 pounds at 24 inches from the, you know, from the mast and 170 inches up. So it's a three-stage mast. It goes way up in the air, and it'll lift quite a bit more than, quite a bit more than that, close to the ground. I know I've lifted 5,000 pounds with it easily before. So it's a small forklift, but it'll do quite a bit of work. I would guess it's probably from the early 80s, maybe, maybe even late 1970s, somewhere in that vintage. And the scoop with this is. It belonged to some big factory somewhere. They went to electric forklifts and they, they scrapped this thing. So it, it got uh, rescued from a junkyard. And then the person who rescued it left it sitting outside uncovered in a field for I think about eight years. And when I got it, the brakes were locked. The, all the, the cable and, or sorry, the chain and the pulleys and everything, the rollers inside the mast were all seized up. I basically replaced every component of the brake system. Master cylinder, wheel cylinders, inching valve, brake shoes. Uh, so I've had the machine for, I don't know, six or seven years now. And it's been pretty good for me. So here's our major problem for today, this big oil leak. Now I know how forklifts are. If there's no oil under it, it's because there's no oil in it. You know, they're basically just four-wheeled oil leaks, but this one's worse than normal. All right, there's the water pump, so you see all the oil that's covering those belts. And there's the front pulley right there, and the front cover. Looks like it's sprayed pretty much everywhere inside these covers. You see the oil stain there. See the oil on the side of the battery. So it's leaking pretty good. But I'm not 100% confident that it's the front main. So I guess the sensible thing to do would be get the pressure washer out and clean this up. Just make sure. Alright. I think we can say it's the front main seal. Let's see if I can zoom in here. See all those little drippies on the outside of that rim of the pulley? Yeah, there's only one place that can come from. It's got to be the front main seal. Yeah. Check out this awesome silicone job on the oil pan. <laughs> that is a classic. Okay, so the next question is, can I get that front pulley off without taking out the radiator? I don't think I can. So you can really see it from this side see the oil dripping down onto this motor mount so that's definitely the front main seal all right looks like we've got a few other things going on here of course so just without even looking at it I can tell you that if you can hear that rumbling the rear wheel bearings are shot or at least need to be repacked they're running dry and then you see this bolt sticking down right here that's out of the engine mount, so this engine mount is, is totally, totally shot. Yeah, the bolt on the front pulley is inch and five-eighths on the head. So three-quarter drive ratchet will just fit between that and that counterweight. So I don't know if we'll have a chance of getting it out of here or not. We'll give it a shot. It's going to hold the fan and give her away.
All right, I've got it on the run now. I put a bolt through one of those balancing holes and I'm just holding it with my bar. Oh, oh yeah. There we go. All right, we're doing good. I got the pulley out without having to pull the radiator. So that saves me a bunch of work. All right, we'll see if we can fish that seal out of there. Oh man. Oh. What is going on here? I think we got it now. Some wanker just glued the hell out of it with silicone. Arr. Yeah. That's it. So I guess we better check these hubs. Come on, baby. Oh. I don't know why the battery always dies on the last bolt. Let's see if she's got enough. There we go. Well, as you may be able to see, this bearing is totally junk. This is the outer race. They're tapered roller bearings. And this is the inside bearing. Now, the other thing that's important with tapered roller bearings is you want to clean all the grease out from inside of this of this cage and check the inside race. You should be able to see down between the rollers and check the condition of the inside race because I have seen it before where the outer race is, is fine, but if you look down inside the bearing at the inside race, the bearing was no good. I went ahead and split the cages on these bearings. All right, focus. So this is what I was talking about. Even if the outer race looks okay, you could still have a problem with the inner race. So you see here, this bearing is, is totally junk just based on the inner race alone. Well, we've got a stack of brand new Timken bearings. Hopefully they're the right ones. Yeah, so far so good. Yeah. Okay, that one's right. Okay, looks good. Now we've got to pack these bearings. I'll show you two ways to do it. We will start with the way that my dad taught me how to do it. And then we'll try the supposedly easy way. So, palm full of grease like so. And all you want to do is just push that grease 
up into the cage. These are pretty large bearings, it's going to take a lot of grease. So this is what you want to see. You want to see the grease come up between the rollers to the top of the cage. Like so. And you just repeat that all the way around the bearing. So that looks pretty good. We've got grease coming up to the top of the cage inside of all the rollers. That's what you want. You can smear as much grease on the outside of it as you want. It won't do any good. The, the important part of packing the bearing is getting it inside the cage. Uh, obviously the drawback with this method is cleanup. You probably don't want to use your wife's good dish towels. So let's try the supposedly easy way. This is a bearing packer. You can buy these at any any auto parts store. And I believe the bearing goes in like this. I made this spacer just because you know that whole area is going to fill up with grease, so that seemed kind of senseless to me. All right, so the idea is that the outer cone or the the upper cone seals to the cage and then the bottom cone seals to the inner race and so theoretically when we pump this full of grease it's going to push it through the cage so let's give it a shot I think that's it So, you get the idea. Uh, but the most important thing to recognize about this is that it's not free of cleanup. Okay, I think we're ready to put these hubs back on. This is the part number for the seal, if anybody cares. Made by National, which is part of Federal Mogul, which if I'm not mistaken is part of Timken. It's kind of how it goes with bearings. It's like a, it's like an exercise in consolidation. Anyway, most important thing, put the bearing in before you put the seal in. Not that I would know what happens if you don't do that. So I don't, I don't typically put any grease in the actual hub just pack the bearing and put it in that's all you really need especially on these hubs this thing travels so slowly th these bearings are never going to get hot enough for any grease inside that of the hub packed in the hub to do any good anyway so what's on the rollers is all it's ever going to get uh, one other thing i want to do before i put it back together there was no gasket behind these dust caps when i took the took the hub apart so that's probably a big part of why we had problems with the bearings they maybe had put some some silicone or something on it but I'm not sure I think they just went on dry so I'm gonna make some gaskets real quick
Here's the part number for the front main seal. It's a national as well. So it's kind of weird. It's an inch spec seal. So it's two and a uh, two and an eighth shaft diameter, three inch bore, three eighths thick. Which normally seals are specced in in millimeters. Even going back to the Stone Age, they were all done in millimeters. But for whatever reason, this one is an inch spec seal. So there it is, and it's a double lip seal. And by the way, all these bearings and seals I bought from Rock Auto, you know, the website. Yeah, guys, I'm sure I've seen the, the ads and the little jingle. But yeah, dirt cheap and quick shipping. Can't complain about them at all. I don't know if I can record this or not. Man, get, it's tight in here, getting this seal installed. I think I've got it all the way in. Yeah. All right, we're calling it good enough. Man, that thing goes way up in that cover. Okay, this bolt has a, a thick washer on it, and there's oil on the inside of that washer, so put a little stripe of your favorite sealing product on there. I'm using the old silicone. Kind of like a yoke on a transmission or something. If I remember right, there's some kind of crazy torque spec on this bolt. Like 200 foot pounds or something crazy. Okay, that's all it's getting from me. There we go, one new engine mount. You can see it looks a lot better than one old engine mount. But that's the animal right there. Uh, somebody asked me in the live stream the other day, I don't know if anybody's watched that, but they asked me what's a good used forklift to buy. And I didn't have a very good answer. But I'll tell you this, parts availability is like the number one thing to me. So be a little bit weary buying an, an electric forklift just because the batteries are so expensive. But any old gas or propane, even diesel 
forklift is probably a pretty good bet, but make sure you can get parts for it. So this Clark is, I'd say, at least 40 years old. Uh, but this engine mount, $49. Had it in stock in Chicago. I ordered it at like 2 o'clock on a Friday. Came in at 10 o'clock on Monday morning. So the Clarks are a little bit crude as far as forklifts go, but they made tons and tons and tons of those machines. There's parts everywhere. You can even get aftermarket parts. This is an aftermarket part. It's not a, you know, it's not a Clark part, but you can get aftermarket brake parts too. They're real cheap. So I don't know what's left of Clark today. I think they've been sold to a, a Korean company, but the the older machines are, are pretty easy to get parts for. Let's be smart about this. Whoa, baby. Come on. For peace of mind. Good. I'll try it. So what I think is supposed to happen is this motor mount is supposed to pull down until that steel sleeve that's inside is tight against the washer on the top. Oh. And it's basically got its own built-in pre-tension on it. So that looks pretty good. Slam a bolt on the other side and I think we're good to go. Might as well mount this hub, I guess. I'm just gonna do it like you do any other wheel bearing. Takes an inch and seven sixteen socket, which is weird. So the way you normally do a single nut wheel bearing, tighten her up good and tight so you can't spin it anymore, and then back it off like so, and then just make it hand tight.
Should be able to feel a little bit. Of, yeah, that feels pretty good. So obviously if your service manual has a wheel bearing spec, you should follow it. But generally speaking, what I just did will work fine. Just tighten her up good and tight to get it seated and then hand tight. Not bad. So I'll put our custom made gasket on here. You could use silicone I guess if you want. I just, I hate silicone with a passion. If you ever want to get this cap back off, you know, without damaging it. Silicone's a bad plan. Is that really tight? Now, if you're the kind of guy who believes everything you read on the internet, you will know that putting a Fram oil filter on any engine is a 100% positive way to make it explode instantly. But uh, I like to be kind of a risk taker, you know, live on the edge. So. I'm going to just cross my fingers and hope for the best. Looks good so far. This is the electrical problem we're going to fix next. find out if this fancy pants GoPro actually works. Now check out this lovely stuff. That's what I drained out of that engine. And of course that's water mixed with oil. Makes this milky, nasty looking stuff. And that's pretty common on forklifts from what I've seen. Uh, the problem is they never get up to operating temperature. So you jump on it, you start it up, you know, full throttle for five ten minutes shut it off and it might not run again for the rest of the day or even the rest of the week or the rest of the month you know it just depends but because the engine never gets up the temperature it never has a chance to to basically boil off the water that's gotten mixed in with the oil and propane engines seem to be a lot worse for whatever reason there must be more more condensation associated with burning propane than than any other kind of fuel but yeah, that'll 
that'll take out your main bearings pretty quickly so just keep an eye on it you can see it on the dipstick and it, like if you pull the fill cap off and see that white stuff on the bottom you got water in your oil used to see it all the time when we worked on fire trucks same problem you know they do a lot of idling or or short trips around town you know they never get taken out on the highway and and run up to temperature and yeah that'll nuke your engine pretty quick